Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You like this? This actually go with the um, strawberry lemonade real bit. Let this vibe out for a second. Let this vibe out for a second. All right. Man, cheers. Cheers, baby. What we cheers into? What we cheers You into? know, we started Gemini Scorpio podcast in Scorpio season. Did you know that we started? Wow, well, second episode it was Founders Day. Hold up. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. Animal. Them ad libs in the back go crazy. I was just telling, um, Marcus, I was like, Lauren Hill used to go crazy, bro. And she only had one project. It's crazy. Legendary stuff. Go again. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. Dad, so, that was about to go. You stopped as soon as it was about to go stupid. Our second episode, our first episode, I think we recorded November the 11th. Yeah. Our second episode, the one that we got on video, November, November 17th. Founders Day. Yes. So we had to record at least like, well, man, get your shit right, babe. Come on, man. Get your shit right, babe. So we had to at least record, um, like, I don't know, this week or something like that, right? Yeah. So it's so much nostalgia. And I say it's so much nostalgia because we started off Yo, doing it by ourselves. Leave my mic alone. It's my bad, fine. My bad, my bad, my bad. We started off by ourselves, recording by ourselves. We did. And now. We back. Oh, my God. We are back mm -hmm. by ourselves. Yeah, we by ourselves. No team. This is before we put that job aid out looking for a team mm -mm -mm. that turned into a big team. But it really just started us, the camera. You still got a little more equipment than you started with last time. But. It's just crazy because like it is very nostalgic. That's crazy. Us, the living room, just us and the camera. Aww, I'm gonna off. cry. It is. It's just it's crazy because like I'm gonna cry. And now like we're doing it by ourselves and stuff yeah. like that. And like it's just it's I, I like this because yeah. it's just um I don't know, it's special. You mm -hmm. feel me? Like it's different. It's it's not different because mm -hmm. we're used to it, but it's like how we got the whole setup and shit. Yeah. Like it's crazy. It's yeah. Great. How you feel, babe? I feel good. You did a good job for setting up. You was hot. I know you was moving. I was just sitting here switching chairs. I ain't really do too much like the beginning. <laughs> but you know, I'm here. I show up and I'm ready. I feel good. It's all good. I feel babe. good. I'm happy. Want... Uh, I'm happy to sit here. Wow, Jay. Tomorrow is the seventeenth. That's why. That's why. I'm no, I get. I I got the moment, but I just realized today was the sixteenth. Damn, I almost feel like we should have held out till tomorrow. Exactly. No, because we're going to drop it. We could yeah, drop. It. We could well, actually. also, it's actually eleven twenty four, so we're still going to be recording into the seventeenth, so we could treat it like a birthday. You know, you go into twelve, so at twelve we might gotta take a shot. You know what I'm saying? No, so, but what I was saying was we yeah. we actually and dropped actually, it on the seventeenth. Okay, so, so we, we could, really could have. We okay, could, we could really drop, drop this tomorrow. tomorrow well. Like yeah, for real, we can if yeah, we want to. That's right. Gonna be done for real. Yeah, shout out to the equipment and all you know now that you didn't know before. <laughs> nah, for real, for real. But um, uh, uh want to start this by saying I got some this tequila. You know, we really don't even do this. This we, is uh, actually nice. I actually like this a lot. The first um, that's really good. First African American lady who had a te her own tequila in Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's cool. It's cool. You like it's it? It's delish. It's delicious. Yeah. And especially with the strawberry lemonade, like it just add a little razzle dazzle and it's like light and it's already sweet. So it's really good. So I'm going to take it easy because, you know, it's still tequila and it could come fast and quick. How you feel about like recording, babe? <sighs> you know, I've been on the fence mm. at recording, um, but it's really been me battling me, mm. you know, like I think, you know, when we started recording, you know, it happened so fast. It wasn't like um, 
unexpected, but it happened fast. I was like, put this shit on camera, put on camera. And I promise you from day one, the support was just there. And I think I didn't really ever have a moment to kind of process it or register it. We just kept going and, you know, it, and we went a long time. So after, you know, a small hiatus. Do me a favor. I'm sorry. Just angle your chair. Look, there you know. Look, you Bro. know how I do. Look, all I want you to do. No, 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 no. <laughs> angle your chair. You see how mine is angled me? this way? Angle it this way. Yeah. <sighs> let's see. Let's see. See, it's so, come on, bro. Look, it look way better, right? To the visionary. I All got right, you, babe. That's what I'm saying. Act like you know, man. Like, act like you move know. That act like you know. Yeah. Stop yelling control at me. Control that motherfucker. You yeah. feel me? It's supposed to stand on its own. I'm not supposed to have to control it at all. Yeah, you look way, you look way better like that. I'm sorry, okay. but I'm, I apologize. You were telling me how yeah, recording like I, was. Um, I just feel like it was, when I took the break I did, it was hard for me to come back. And I know you've been like, babe, we got this. For me, I think I just needed a moment because, it, you know, recording came with a lot. It was so much, as much beautiful moments as it brought. Mm -hmm. Bro, this mm -hmm. this is why, this right here. <laughs> this, all of this. Mm -hmm. And that, and that, you know, it came with so much. And, you know, I think I was enjoying my solitude a little too much, mm. but I, was also asking myself like you know what is really like what's stopping you from recording and it's really nothing except for my own kind of ways of you know sometimes you kind of what's what's the term people use when like for example you get a good job and you don't think you deserve to be there but you're like I'm here but you feel like how did I fucking get here? You get what I'm saying? Um, it's a word for it. I can't think of it right now. It might be because I took too many sips of tequila so far. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, but you know what we, I'm talking about. We say it all the time. Uh, but black people experience it a lot, especially when you we get a good corporate job. You understand. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We get a good corporate job. And it's like, yo, I'm here, but I, I barely made it by a thread. And I think I was kind of struggling that for a little bit. Like, damn, it was so good when it was. But it's like, do I really belong there? Should I really be there? So it took me a real minute to kind of you know i feel like it's it's a term we always say it it's crazy um don't uh it's not talking to yourself self sabotage it's self sabotage but it's another phrase though it's um almost like um identity not it's a uh, Damn, somebody help it's us like out. You feel like you're you not, tell me because it's a word. I, I know it. It's just not sitting on my tongue right now. But it's it's almost like a, a false sense of identity. Like I like not always feeling like I belong in that space. Right, and right. um, you know, it's crazy though because you know I know I see our messages. I see the tweets and like you know, and it's like I know that we were so good in that space. But it's almost like when you take a break from it, it's like, do I belong in that space? Should I keep doing it? And then since then, so many podcasts has formed. I feel like at that time, I really, you know, you kind of put me on a podcast. I, at that point, I didn't really know too much about podcasts. And, um, you know, we came and prior to that, I, I knew the set podcast that I knew. But now since, you know, we were doing podcasts, it's so many more podcasts to this date. And I was like, not is my voice necessary, but did I need to really do it? So it took me a second. It took what me a second. What made you finally push the button and be like, bet I'm okay to do it? You know, um, I'm really in a season of my life where I'm finally understanding the rooms that I walk in, I really do shift. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it took me a while to accept that. Like, you know, I think I was shying away from it. And I say it humbly because I really do believe every space that I touch, I really bring something to it. And I'm finally... You know, I'm not going to tell y'all how old I am. Maybe later down. You know what I'm saying? My birthday was last week, as it was the week when we started last time. But um, at my big age, I'm finally actually understanding, like, wow, girl, you take up space. And I'm accepting it now. Mm. And people do really genuinely love what I have to say, what I encourage, what I stand for. And I definitely think that I'm in a space like, why not keep sharing? You know, I think I went into a space of like I'm done oversharing, but, you know, just finding my balance of not too oversharing, but sharing enough and sharing what, you know, is relatable and what people are going through, what I'm going through. And I'm cool with that. Like, you know what I'm saying? It took me a second, though, to come I, back to that space. I feel like, honestly, mine was just, I feel like we work, we work through so much, mm -hmm. right? Mm -mm -mm. We work through so much and it's like we, um, 
I think people can use that, right? For sure. I feel like um, a lot of people, even when we was doing a podcast, a lot of people say, like, I want to be like y'all or whatever, but they don't understand. (laughs) (laughs) But they don't understand. (laughs) They don't understand the... um, Yo, what comes with it? For or whatever, sure. You know what I'm saying, and I'm gonna just be honest. You know, like recently, I've been seeing um, just a like a lot of young couples just struggling and going through their yeah. own trauma and pain. And we we was doing it a while ago. <laughs> yeah, we were, we was going through it. We was going through it a while ago. But it's like we still go through. Yeah, it, right? yeah for and, sure. And it looks different right now. But, right, right. And, uh, and I know we blessed. And, and for me, honestly, it's like man, yo, people can use y'all mm-hmm. testimony, y'all voices. You get what I'm saying. And with that being said, I wanted to like open the episode with like a prayer. I know. I love it. Come on. Let's do it. Yes. I know uh God judged my heart, not the alcohol that I just consumed. Oh, we drinking, yeah. No, yeah. but it, either way, God loves us at any space. I actually just was watching Pastor Larry Page today, and he said, God uses whoever, and mm. he doesn't use the perfect. God uses you where you at to show you where you can go. So I know I just drank, but God knows my heart. So don't use that as but an excuse. But we're going to continue to Yeah, drink, exactly. Man. And God still knows my heart, and you know. So let's do it. Come so on. So for, for the Christians out there that's judging... I was going to say yourself. something real bad, yeah. but I'm uh, going to catch myself what I was going to say. I you look at it. I know, no, I know. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm you sorry. Because you wanted to put this monitor up. I know and I, I should have it. I was but it's okay because it, it helps me because my hair be fine. I was going to put it right here. But you know, it it's like, like looking at a mirror. You know you can't leave a mirror in front of a girl. But let's I do it. Come on, let's pray and all heads shall bow. You going to pray or? I could do it. If you want. You want to do it? No, you want it. You wasn't going to do it. I mean, I don't mind. I mean, you know, I don't really. Go ahead. I got you. Okay, God, we just want to thank you for where we are today and how far you have brought us. We know we want to thank you for allowing us to be in this space and continuing to grow and for you to keep using us as vessels to touch all of who you would like us to touch and be all of who you would like us to be. God, we thank you for this space we're in. We thank you for allowing us to have a voice and to not be scared of our voice, to continue to push your message forward. God, we ask that you work through us. We ask that you continue to bless us, and we ask you to continue to bless those who are listening and those who are watching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I definitely also wanted to just pray for all. Uh, let me just add, I guess. Yeah, just pray on, for the on. um the the young couples as well. You yeah. know, a lot of people are going through things and a lot yeah. of pain and things like that. We saw that for real. You feel me? Like we know how that feel. And um just wanna pray for those that's that's going through the, those those hard times, mm-hmm. that they get through it, mm-hmm. that they learn to um, you know, accept each mm-hmm. other, that they learn to uh accept fight themselves. Through the, mm, yeah, fight through the yeah. battles. Um and just for guidance, right? For, right. We ask that God just give us guidance. Cause we don't know, right? Yeah, and for the we're people trying to figure it out, right? And, and for the people that don't know that He can use us, um, to Ooh. be His voice, right? God, we thank you, right? Not even like to be our voice, but to be His voice, to be able to speak to to them through. What do him. you want us to say? Exactly. What and, do you um, want us to be? What do you right. want us to show? And um, just let they say God says like, you know, if you uh, if you ask, then He He shall give, yeah. right? And pray that our voices can be used for positive, but also heard. Um, by millions, you get what I'm saying? Because I know a lot of these ask for what you want. Exactly right. Ask so like, hopefully that because a lot of times we see the negativity, yeah, um, go viral and things like that. But we we, we want the positivity to go viral to, to to see that we're a real couple that it's hard. You get what I'm saying? And, and we fighting through it. Though, but with me? God, you shall be able to overcome. Nah, for real, for real. But Aww, um, that's nah. such a powerful thing. Yeah, man. God, we thank you. Yes. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen, baby. Amen. I feel like- I was um, going to be bro ratchet, like, should we shot this? <laughs> Yo, I mean, I was going to start to- if, if, I feel like a heathen. I'm a dog, I'm a heathen. Listen, if-, if um, Oh my God. If he, uh, if he, if I started to pray, <clears throat> I was going to start to pray with Big Listen, G. I, Big G is crazy. Big, <laughs> Big G. Big homie, but you know you're supposed to talk to God like, that's your dog for real. Talk to him, address him how you want, you know? Address them how you need to. First of all, as long I want as you to, address them. First of all, I want to tell the people this. Okay. They, they don't understand. We by ourselves, right? This is like multitasking at its finest. Okay, bro. so this let's break crazy. it down to the people what you're actually doing. 
because they don't see that. They cannot see. So I know you thought that they could see, but they can't see actually what you're doing. I can vividly Bro, see. Bro, this is crazy. And this is talent at its finest because you're doing an exceptional job, may I say. Thank you, Bay. You're welcome. It's crazy because like, like usually like what we do is for the for the people that do content or like record, they will know. Mm -hmm. They record on the cameras too. Mm -hmm. So just in case anything mess up, you can have the extra footage. But my memory cards are four. So it's only one and done. You be doing interviews out the boatload every single week. So I just gotta be careful because it's one and done. Whatever, whatever video we get. That's all we got. That's all that's all we got. Well, may the Lord bless what we have so that it's enough. Facts. You ready to get the show started, Let's babe? do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So um we wanted to talk about uh just just I don't want to say transformation, but relocation. Relocation. Yeah. Because um, we've relocated. People know that, but we've never talked about it together. For sure. For sure. You I know. think for you, it was definitely hard because like mm, 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 mm. you kind of came down here like on like, I mean, I came down here on faith, but you came down here on <laughs> faith. Like me, I was chasing my dream. It's like, bro, whatever happens, fuck it. You... Came out with a Maya. A mustard seed. That's what they would a call it. A mustard seed, in for the sure. Bible. A mustard seed. So, um, I guess we could, I'm going to open the floor to you. How was relocating for you, babe? It has been the most challenging yet beautiful experience. Like, you know, it's so crazy. People ask me, like, how do you like it? I'm like, you know, I'm still adjusting, but I'm never coming home. Mm. And um, the reason why I say that is specifically because I think hometown is always going to be hometown. Like, mm. you know, home is always going to be home. But when you really leave your hometown to explore what else life has to offer, it's a very, it's a feeling that I don't think people understand because it's like you know you have so many friends and circles and family that live in this box like that's all they see we know the same places mm -hmm. we know the same monuments to restaurants to churches to malls to people like i know when i go to certain places i'm going to see certain acquaintances people and be able to say hello and i know everything i need to know in this one city but there's so much more to the world. And I already knew that from traveling, but even after travel, I go back home. When I left home, I didn't realize like, yo, I really left home. <clears throat> like, so I'm in a new city. Everything's unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. I don't go anywhere where I see a familiar face. So anywhere I go, I almost said I felt like an alien because anywhere I go, I really don't know anyone. And that part is hard because I think support is such a huge part of your life that mm -hmm. we take for granted so much. And relocation didn't show me how much it was like, yo, like not being able to just hug my friends just after, I don't know, a long week, not being able to see my mom just randomly, like just for a cup of coffee after, you know, like... Life be life in, so work be hard, you know, family be hard, relationship be hard, parenting be hard. Sometimes you just want to go pour a glass of wine with your girls. Sometimes you just want to go sit down with your mom for coffee. When you relocate, that no longer exists. You literally have to find a new habit, a new escape. And it's, it's, it's surreal for a second because you think you don't really realize it like, yo, damn, like I'm really out here dolo like not dolo as if i don't have my family but my escapes i don't have any of them mm. so that was extremely hard for me because i do have a lot of support shout out to all those who love me in all of my circles that i do have um so when you come to a new city you realize like i don't have that that is extremely difficult to navigate. Like, it's so difficult to navigate, especially because on top of it, I'm a mom. So the other part of support, you know, when I'm not saying tired of momming, but I need a second. I'm tired of momming. I could be like, Grandma, you want your baby? Grandma, like, come bring me my baby. And I could drop her for a weekend, for a week, whatever I need. Thank God for that support. When you relocate, that no longer exists. 
But I do want to ask you this. Yeah. Um, before we even go into like the yeah. hardest part and things like that. <clears throat> for young women or young ladies mm-hmm. that's, that has a relationship and things like that mm-hmm. and thinking about relo- relocating, mm-hmm. what was it in your situation or even me that made you comfortable enough to like say, okay, I'm going a, I'm to a just go ahead and go? Yeah, so <clears throat> like, you know, we've been together for a while, you know, going on five years, you know what I'm saying? So when we moved, we were going on, we were in our fourth year and, you know, I knew enough to know that I wasn't alone. We've been together all this time. We've been navigating through all this time. And that was a blessing in it. Like I will say, and it's crazy because even when I talk to people, like even a girl who did my hair, I was talking to her. She's from London. She's from the UK. Um, and she was just saying like, you know, she's really out here by herself. And she was like, at least you out here and you got your man. And that shit really hit me. I was like, damn, real shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because you could really leave your hometown. You really be navigating a different city dolo. And that's extremely hard. Mm -hmm. Like, I am super thankful that I did get to come out here with somebody that, one, I've known for years, that I know who has my back. Even through hardship, I know bare minimum, we ain't leaving each other in the cold. And that's something we've actually seen over years. We've known that, like, bare minimum, I might not fuck with you today, Mm -hmm. but I'm never going to. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't, you, we still family. You know what I'm saying? And I think when I decided to move, I was like, you know, we, you know, we were working on our relationship and repairing and doing whatever we had to do for us. But I knew bare minimum that Jay got my back, Jay got my back, and we in this together. And worst case, we don't work out. We still got each other back and respect enough to know we got each other back and we not here dolo you know what i'm saying and i and i knew that and i and that's and i and i commend us for like even having that level of trust because we've been through some shit but the one thing i know for a fact is you got my back like you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying even on a friendship stance like you know what i'm saying even that's far-fetched to say because we didn't start out as friends but we grew to family like you know what i'm saying so it's kind of i kind of understood that say god forbid we didn't work out platonically you my friend like you know what i'm saying and i knew that and i understood that and i was like so i'm down like you know what i'm saying and and honestly to be honest like as an individual i just always knew to like god ain't never let me down so I, i'm not i always knew like sometimes and and this is i hope don't take this personal no, I'm not, I'm not. um i also knew that sometimes even <clears throat> when you relocate with a partner Sometimes you need somebody to get you there. Mm. Maybe you went and never moved. You know what I'm saying? And this is just all the possibilities that I ran through as we were considering this move. I'm like, okay, we're going together and I'm, I know you got my back, but God forbid anything do happen, right? I knew that what if God just wants you to have a push and you wouldn't have did it on your own? Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, And you needed to leave a city that you have outgrown, but... You wouldn't have did it on your own if I didn't put this person. Be So everybody serves their purpose. So even if we didn't work out and even if we don't work out, I know that God don't make no mistakes with me. So either way, I'm supposed to be here for a reason. Mm. So vice versa. Like, you know what I'm saying? So we came here and but I knew at the end of the day, I was going to be good regardless whether you because I know you to be my family, whether because I know the God himself and I know me, you know what I'm saying? So, you know. <clears throat> that that was kind of how that I don't want to get planned um, out too far off because like this was something that you yeah. definitely you wrote down like mm-hmm. you wanted to talk about it and I know you've been do your thing because we could go wherever we need to go but I know that this was something that like was a heavy burden on you honestly like, yeah even when we first got down yeah. here I'm gonna tell you why though you know I've only had two major transitions in my life when it comes to moving well um, you know if you know me you know that I'm originally from Connecticut mm-hmm. I lived there till I was 15 years old my mom moved me from Connecticut to Maryland I never left Maryland after that so I moving to Maryland was hard for me from Connecticut Mm -hmm. at 15, my freshman year of high school, you get what I'm saying? Going into my sophomore year, everything I known is in Connecticut. My first little boyfriend, my best friend, everything I know how, where I hang out, my spots, my people, my cousins, like everything I love is in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. My mom moved me to Maryland and that shit was devastating for me. However, I created so much home in Maryland and through D.C. because I lived through the DMV a couple of times. 
I like I I didn't know no, after that. Like I was like, okay, this was my safe haven from Connecticut because I remember at a point like I got older and I was like, yo, that was the best decision my mom could have made for me was to move me from Connecticut to the DMV because I had so much success in education and job and opportunity there. I was like, this is that was the dopest thing my mom could have did, but. Mind you, ninth grade, 10th grade me hated my mom for it. You got to understand. So now I'm older and I'm totally making this decision on my own. Like no mommy, no, nobody just like, you're like, let's do it. And I'm like, do I really want to do it? And I Mm. think at the time when you even suggested to do it, we were going through some things. We had just broke up. We was getting back together. We was trying to figure it out. So this is all my decision. So if anything fails, it's really on me. It ain't on no mommy. It ain't on nobody. Like, you know what I'm saying? So what I will say is... It's my second biggest transition in my life in general. So that's just to me hard, like not transition. Cause you know, obviously I've had, I've been a, you know, I'm a mom, like, but I'm talking about like major move. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's, it's really only my second. So, you know, I didn't really know, know too much about it. I have friends that I do have known. Like I have friends who moved to Houston. I have friends who moved to the DMV. I've had friends, you know, to move to New York and stuff like that. And it actually gave me so much more insight on what they were going through, you know, of doing that. Cause I didn't understand, not that I didn't understand. I was trying to be there for my friends who experienced those transitions as much as I could, but I actually understood it when I finally did it basically. No, I understand it. Um, Can ahead, you pause? Ahead. Because I really, same, like, I feel like it was hard for you. Like, in, I feel like you allowed me to experience my hardship, but it was hard for you as well. And I, and like, even though I may have not said it all the time because I was trying to navigate my own personal emotions around it, but I know it was hard for you. You know what I'm saying? You know, you've never left Baltimore ever. Yeah, it was, um, it was hard for me. Like, you know, like. Don't try to skip past it. <laughs> no, nah, like, it was hard for me for sure. And um, oh man, for me, dang, that's a lot, baby. You go, 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 pour me up, but that's yeah, a lot. I mean, you sit about to put some juice in it. We act gonna, like you know. No, nah, like I don't think we're supposed to be drinking this with juice, though. This is oh, good liquor, but whatever. No, I'm drinking it with juice because ain't no liquor good liquor. Oh, that shit nasty. I'll be honest if it wasn't hard. You feel me? I think um, just even thinking about it, you know what I'm saying? Because like a lot of people. <laughs> A lot of people look at my Instagram, my YouTube, and they think, uh, <clears throat> they think um, everything is going good and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, just not being able to pull up with my friends when I want to. Yeah. Um, I know that's hard. Yeah. I know that's then, so hard. And then, like, all of my, all of my relationships out here is like just transactional. You know what I'm saying? Mm, so yeah. even that in itself is just is tough. You feel me? Like, because sometimes I just want to kick it with my homies, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I don't even want to, like, talk about work, but, you know, like, I do miss um, just being able to pull up the Tim Crib. And, like, I don't even play the game. Or just, you know what I'm saying, just pull up there, play the game, or just watch YouTube videos and him tell me about people he like, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. But, like, here, I just, it's not like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but um, what I will say is I prepare myself for it. Like, I, like for me, like, I have a vision and I know what's, what's going mm-hmm. on. Man. Like, you know mm-hmm. what's up. It's mm-hmm. so, like, the moment I moved to Laurel, it was over. Mm-hmm. When you left Baltimore and moved to Laurel. Mm-hmm. I remember you said that. You was like, once you was able to leave your hometown, because people don't talk about even that. Like, you didn't leave technically the state, but leaving your home, area, like, because let's not be jaded. Baltimore is definitely separate from the DMV. Mm-hmm. They do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But to leave Baltimore in itself, or no matter where you're from, like your city, your home, and even move a little further out, 45 hour, 30 minutes down, mm-hmm. it's still not your home no more. You know what I'm saying? It's, it might be next door, but it's not your home. And I remember you saying, if I could leave Baltimore at all, even to leave my city. It's up. It's, it's up. up and it's stuck. Hey, that's and what the kids it, say. You said it's up and it's stuck and it's up and it's stuck. Oh, shit. You okay? Yeah, mm-hmm. I just made a mess, mess up. Y'all it's gonna okay. see it on the video, but fuck it. It'll be it'll be okay. They understand. Fuck it. But um, yeah, I uh, I did it, but we here. And um, it's been a blessing though, for sure. Hell like I yeah. def- like I feel like you know back home people are like they're going crazy, go stupid. Then I feel like back home people um, people they make fun of like moving to Atlanta. 
Like everybody want to move to Atlanta. Think Who makes fun of moving to Atlanta? You ain't see like you don't see no, people I ain't like. See that. Well, I mean, they do say it's overcrowded here, but I feel like a lot of cities say that. Like Houston be like, don't come here. Atlanta be like, don't come here. But, New York be like, don't come here. But no, specifically, like people be like, people think they're going to just move to Atlanta and and shit get lit. But no. It, but 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 let's talk about how shit got lit. Like, that's you know what, what I'm saying? Like, so, like, it's it's like no I, what it is, That's what, I'm is saying, like, what it is is some people do move and it don't get lit less you know and it's not it don't necessarily mean it's on them it's just you know maybe it wasn't Atlanta for them like maybe they should have went to Cali or Houston mm. or whatever but you know shit really got lit mm. shit got lit that's a fact I think, and I've been um, super proud of you so I feel like you ain't really giving me okay what you moves, want like. For- what like, you mean? Cause well, I, cause what, what, we, you, what you wrote down? You wrote down a lot. Okay. It, it, when, when it came to moving, I thought we it was wasn't a reading had, off. No, you know, you I'm trying. I feel like like we you, had some notes. You when know, you, when you wrote down, when you when you wrote down moving, I felt like it was a lot, and it was like yeah. I wanted you to get that off. Like, I wanted you to feel like this is a safe space, and you can be able to talk about. Okay. It, you know what I'm saying? So let's go to our notes. Let me see what we was so I can make go sure. Go to your notes, baby. Okay. Okay. So. I had what we did was we wrote down some topics and mm-hmm. then I had put some key indicators that I I notated, you know. So one was friendship and family. Mm. Um, you know, it's it's hard navigating friendships long distance. Like mm. people don't understand that. And shout out to your friends, my friends, because we definitely I feel like show up for each other. Like my friends have came down here. So many times in repetition, like all of them, like back Shout to, out to back. your friends, because my oh, friends ain't come down here. Some of them came for work when they got shit that they that they, okay. they got going on. I'm all calling right. these niggas out, but <laughs> now nah, call them out, babe. You right, you right, you right, you right, you right. Call but them your, out. Your, oh yeah, I'm a your, your friends but came seen, to show up for you. Yes, we have seen, but I I will say my friends have definitely like all of them, not all of them, but some of them have came up two three times mm. and. That shit meant so much to me, but I will be honest, it is hard navigating friendships when you are no longer available to just pull up quick, fast in a hurry. Um, There's sometimes I do feel like super alone, like, you know what I mean? Um, You know, like just be working, momming, girlfriending, and you know, some there's days that goes by, you don't really talk to nobody, like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I understand it as a way, you know, everybody's life is going on, so I don't take it personal ever, but it's hard when you move and it's like, damn, like, I have to also pay attention that my friendship is, my friendships are changing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not as available as I am, they're not as available as they are, and it's no longer like, yo, I'll see you on Friday though, so it's cool, like, you know what I mean? Now, I don't know when I'm gonna see you, I don't know when life is gonna permit for us to see each other, so it has to be super, super intentional. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I have still been blessed, you know, my friends still, oh my God, they still call, we still have conversations, but sometimes it is hard, like, it's not the easiest, and it just makes you, you, you want more friends, so what I will say is, gaining friends in Atlanta, you know, we are now officially here on a year mark. It's been hard for me specifically. Shout out to us for that, babe. Yeah. Shout out to Hell us. Hell yeah. A year, you feel me? Yes, Hell sir. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... It's been super... That shit good as hell. I think I think I'll fool here real quick. Hold up. Hello? Real low vibrational fool. Are you expecting an Uber delivery? Yes, I am. Please. Yes, please. <laughs> please, please. We're a low, bright, low vibrational fool. Y'all about to eat, see me eat some McDonald's because I'm starving. It's late. We was trying to record. I might have practice. We ran late. So I'm finna eat me some bust down fries. Hope it's salty. I hope it's fresh. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, all that to say, um, it's just been hard. I do want to get to the nitty gritty. Okay, let's and do it. I feel like I can. You said wait, but I feel like do we it, can do, do that. It, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. I know. I feel like you are. You taught me the importance of like having a friend circle and like just, you know, just having fun. Yeah. Outside of work, right? Right. You taught me that, and with you teaching me that, I feel like I can see the pressure or how hard it can be for you not having it. I feel like back home, uh. back home, you always was with your friends, right? Here, you're not as with your friends as what? much, and then it's it's thrown in your face because I'm always working. Amaya is always like going to dance and things like that and it, that's yeah. left for you to just work and like kind of take on mommy duties yeah. like i know like 
it's been hard. Like, you know, especially because, okay, so we come down here, your business going stupid. Like, you got interview after interview. Amaya, I'm not going to say on the record, if you know, you know what dance team she's on. Lit ass dance team. You know, she has to get her line jacket, so I'm technically not supposed to mm. say it. You know, by... But by the book, I'm not supposed to say it. But if you follow me, you know what dance team she on. They lit. She doing her thing. She's always at practice. Amaya damn near has practice five days out the week. Like, you know, so what ends up happening is everything's kind of about your work, Amaya's dance. And me, it's just really about working and kind of supporting us. Yeah, supporting y'all. So that was extremely hard because like I said, I don't really have a second to unwind because my friends aren't here and I don't have a lot of friends in Atlanta. And, um, you know, it played a toll on me for a while because like I said, like sometimes it just feel like, oh, well, what do I have? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, I come to Atlanta and, um, you know, obviously I have my dreams and I have my visions, but they're not in fruition yet because I'm coming here and I'm trying to navigate a new city first. Mm. I'm trying to see what's what. I'm trying to see what makes sense. I'm trying to see how this is going to work. You know what I'm saying? Watching you guys full-fledged, as soon as we get here, plunge into your dreams. I mean, as soon as we got like here, you're doing... Running, right? Yeah, as soon as we get here, you're interviewing. As soon as we get here, I might mix the team. And then it's just like, so what you about to do? <laughs> like, mm. what you doing? Me, I'm just double working, like you know what I'm saying, working, mom and girlfriend at home, and you know it's crazy because I, you know, I I don't really say I'm an entrepreneur because I'm not really selling nothing in a way where like I, my business is selling something, but at the same time I've always had something. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like I've always either had the podcast, I always was having my events, I always had something I was into or like I just always had my friends and my circles and things that aligned with me. So I came down here and it was a struggle to really fully figure out what is it that you're here for? Mm. Like, you know, it's benefiting the whole household, but like you. Like what about you? I want to ask you something if you don't mind. Yeah. <clears throat> Somebody said this. Well, actually, like, JS1, I was talking to him, and he was saying, bro, you got to stand like you're a mirror, mm -hmm. right? And I'm just curious, and you could mm -hmm, mm -hmm. choose to talk about it if you want or not. Do, do you sometimes feel like, I, I want to ask this right. Do, do you sometimes feel like two things? Mm -hmm. I make it hard to exist when you haven't found your place one mm -hmm. and two um sometimes you feel like you have to rush yourself because i'm moving at a certain pace so hmm. i will say that i by default anybody you are your circle right mm -hmm. that's what well, that's what they say like you are who you hang around so you always moving, moving, moving. Yeah, does it make me feel like, damn, you need to be doing something? Mm. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, because, like, I'm never going to be in a situation, like, you know, I don't ever want to be in a situation where you moving, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm still trying to figure out, of course. Like, by default, as the human part of me is like, okay, you got to figure it out. Like, niggas is moving. And it's not even just you. It's my daughter, too. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy because, like, it's really the both of y'all. Like, mm. it, it's like, so it was, it's hard because it's like watching both of you. It's like, damn, well, what do I have? You know what I'm saying? Um, so answer the question. Yeah, sometimes I feel like I have to speed up. But what my balance is and what I'm learning over time is to rest and assure that whatever is for me is for me and it's coming. So it, it let's be clear, the beginning of the year, it was hard for me. Like I was deeply affected by it. Like mm. in a way where it was just like, it was fucking with me. Like I was like, yo, like you, you came to Atlanta, like what you doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? You had recharge at home. You had something at home. What you doing? Like, and it's like, all right, but I can't just jump in a recharge here. Like my, like I don't got my friends here. I don't got my support here. How do you do this? How do you do that? Or what is it that you want to do here? Like, you know what I'm saying? And I wasn't ready to podcast yet. So it's like, okay, you're not going to podcast. So what are you going to do? So it was kind of making me feel super small, mm. like to the point where like, I think in the beginning of the year, you already know, we've talked about it. Like I was falling into like real bad depressions of like 
feeling misplaced. Like, should I really have moved here? Like, was this the right move for me? Like, was it going to benefit me? And like, and I, and I, it was up to the point where I felt like the move only, it been only benefited you and Amaya and it mm-hmm. didn't benefit me. And, um, you know, shout out just to growth because, you know, through that transition period, it, like I call this year my, a really humbling period for me because, you know, I, I had to really challenge my ego, challenge like myself on just like, who are you? And I, and like, without your support, without your, your hometown, like, wow, they got their own thing. Who are you? You know what I'm saying? And it really, you know, God is so good because I like, I had to get in gear, like to really feel like, no, you still that girl. You just have to switch your seasons. Like, you know what I'm saying? So this may not be my season to have a business or have something that you guys are supporting me. This may just be my season to support y'all and to fully plant my seeds. And I had to really get comfortable with that, but it wasn't comfortable for me at first. Like at first it was like, yo, what? And let's be clear when I say at first, this at first led through the beginning of the year through May beginning of the year through May, I was trying to find like, what was it? Like, what is it? What, 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 what are you doing? It took me a while. You know what I'm saying? I had picked up a second job. Like, you know what I'm saying? I had some, you know, cause it wasn't just what was going on. It was that I was balanced. I was ha- dealing with things that were just also coming my way. Like my job, I had moved. They told me I was remote permanently. We get here. They're like, oh yeah, well you need to come back to office. Like what? I don't live there anymore. What you mean coming to DC? Like I live in Atlanta now. I told y'all that. Like I had to figure that out. And then, you know what I'm saying? And the scare of that, I get a second job, work out the remote job. So now I'm working two jobs. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not like, okay, like, boom, I may not be, have business, have this, but guess what? I'm getting money. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, let's channel all your energy and to get money. But all that shit caused some overwhelmingness. Like it's like, now you're working two jobs. Now you still got to be mom. Now you still got to be girlfriend. It was a lot. It was a lot to get it. And I'm just now trying to find a small amount of balance. Like I haven't even got my full balance yet, but I'm finally getting a balance. Like it was challenging as hell. You know, sometimes uh, women don't express that the best way they could, right? And sometimes I guess you guys want us to get it. Yeah. But- in a moment that you do, let's say it's all perfect, right? You do express it the way you should. Not, I don't want to say should, but you express it in the best way you can, right? That you need help or it's hard for you. How do your man be there to support you in those moments? And what do you need as a woman? It's so funny because I think I'm... Um... Like, I'm just like, you know how I used to be scared of getting older, but the older I get, the well, your more. Mother wants some food yeah, too. you could unpack it right here. You good? Well, no, unpack it no, and fine. your mom and bring it back out. Yeah, okay. Look at the well, bag. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, because, you know. <clears throat> it's crazy because now that I'm getting older, I'm finally just understanding the principle that sometimes nobody can do nothing for you. Mm. Everybody cannot save you. Mm. Like, you can't save me. Like, you can't, like, some things I have to really do on my own. And what I mean that is, like, there's things you can do, obviously, to support where I am. But there's just some things that I have to do on my own. There's inner work that I have to do on my own. It's touching, it's conversations with God that I have to have on my own that you will never be able to do enough. You you will think like you're doing your best mm. and it will never be enough to what I need because I have to do it by myself. You get what I'm saying? Before you even go farther, yeah. if, you don't, if you don't mind, it's crazy because I got to a place and I kind of was... Um, I don't want to say scared, but if you could take it out of the bag too, I'm sorry. Yeah. Just take go go in your room, and, and, take it out of the bag. Yeah, because the bag is gonna make noise. It's gonna be on there. But I was gonna say like I got to a place where I kind of was I, I I didn't know how how I should feel about this. I had got kind of got to a place where I was like, I'm gonna intentionally stop doing things to make you happy. Yeah. Not what well, I'm always gonna do things to make you happy. But right, right. I get what you mean. You get what I'm saying? And, yeah. and I say that because it was like. I, at one point, I felt like I was doing things, and it's just like it was never enough. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I just want to be able to do things. I just want to be able to be me, and don't have to, and and don't have to feel like I'm um, I have I have to do these things to make you happy, right? right? And to hear you say that, like, 
Yeah. To hear you say that, bro, I, sometimes there's nothing that you can do. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a form of relief because it's like, I wish I would have known that, right? Yeah. Because then maybe I, t- I wouldn't have took things. First of all, I think as men, like we talking about the way to, well, I always talk about the way to superior man. And like as men, our we have a, a niche, uh, um, we try to fix things, right? That's, mm-hmm. that's the way of how we are. So like anytime I see you sad or down, I want to fix it. Yeah. When like you just said, sometimes they don't even have I got nothing to do with me. It's nothing yeah, I can do. Yeah, it's nothing you can do. And it's crazy because a lot of time, you know, I feel like good men by default, they want to problem solve, problem solve, problem solve. Like they don't even let you vent. Like, all right, you said what? All right, bet I'll do this. <laughs> like, it's like, dang, nigga, I'm just venting. Relax. Like, but they be just so quick to be like, what you say? You said you, you your tire flat, you upset your tire flat bad. I'll go get the air right now. I thought that's what a man job was. <laughs> <laughs> like, shit. But sometimes, like, it's deeper than a tire being flat. Sometimes it's like, what did I, what, what is, why don't I pay attention to my car? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the, the fucking 32, 31, 40, 56 been <laughs> the on the tire screen. Pressure, baby. The tire pressure, <laughs> been on the screen for months. Oh, okay. Why you ain't pay attention to that? Like, what is it that got you so consumed that you don't pay attention to your tire pressure? Mm. All that to say is, yeah, you come and resolve them, but sometimes it really take a level of like, what do I have to do to get my life under control? And sometimes as a man, resolving that issue can be enabling you. Exactly. Honestly. Not even just enabling. It prevents us from finding the solution, mm. which is enabling essentially. However, it's just like sometimes we're thinking of the solution already. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, not just the solution, but how do we continue to prevent this? How do I fit this in my schedule so I don't keep getting here? Or how do I make this make sense? You know what I'm saying? So that I make sure I put it on the calendar or whatever it may be. Mm. And that's why I said there's some things that like, even as problem solvers, like you're just not, you're not going to be able to do because, okay, you're going to fix the flat tire, but it's going to get flat again because I don't know how to put it on my schedule to make sure I make sure my tires have air in them. I replace them. Um, they're not bald and I buy new tires. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just whatever it may be. But all that's to say to bring that analogy back in, you know, through that problem, through that situation, I don't even think it was as simple as a flat tire. Mm. It was really just the fact that I've had so many different transitions and, you know, obviously yeah, I had therapists through that time. It's just not being able to fully indulge and soak in the transitions you were taking mm. or excuse me, having like, you know, we move here mm-hmm. and then boom, a my zone dance team, boom, you getting the fumes, boom. I got shit with my job. Boom. We try and furnish house. Boom. It's just things back to back to back that, you know, it takes some time to, you got to really sit in some shit like to get through it. Uh, you, you said something that was, that, that was intriguing. You was like, you know, you moved on here because you trusted me, and at the end of the day, we was family for real. Sometimes I be scared of that because, like, we are family, and like, even I said, like, at the end of the day, like, you like my dog. They can hear that, but oh, I'm so sorry. But whatever. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. I wanted to get your opinion on this. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna play it. See what you think. I know the truth. If you're gonna have a long term relationship with somebody, this is something people don't talk about ever. But I'll say it. You better stay attracted to them. Mm -hmm. You better have physical intimacy with them. Mm -hmm. And if you don't maintain that part of your relationship, like you keep dating, like, man, you start keeping it spicy all the time. Physically, I'm talking about what starts to happen over time is you start living with just your friend. Mm -hmm. And in most relationships, I have a lot of friends. I don't want to lay next to them every single night. Yeah. Right. I got a bunch of really good friends that are male and female, and I don't want to be married to them. And if you allow your spouse to turn into just your friend, Mm -hmm that you lose that intimacy, that physical connection. And so I think that's one part of your evaluation. How often do you touch each other? Do you hold each other's hands? At different stages of your relationship, physical intimacy can look different ways. I doubt at 80 years old, we're gonna be doing what we do now, but I'm gonna be dancing with her in the living room, I hope. Wow. I was curious to see what, how did you feel about that? Like, and let's, let's speak about us though. Like, do you feel like, how do, not how, whether you draw a line, but I'm going to have it open. Like, what, what do you feel about that? What do you think when you hear that and you think about our relationship, what do you think? I mean, we fucking. <laughs> so, <laughs> <that's crazy. laughs> I, I mean, it's that, you know, I don't know. Like, that's, I, let's, okay, so this is how I think of it. Like, 
okay. I don't, when I think of us, I think of forever's marriage and things like that. And from what I know of marriage forever's, I know that there are seasons that intimacy is short. Like, you know what I'm saying? Depending on what's going on in life and what's going on, you know, financially, it just can be some hurdles that go through intimacy. So, you know, from what I've known or heard through marriage is, yes, it's an active duty to make sure you guys keep that, but there's just going to be seasons where sometimes that does fall short, Mm. just like anything, like, you know, so, you know, I don't really, so I don't know, like, I feel like I can clearly distinguish my friend from my man. You know what I'm saying? So, but do we? Do you, Do you think? And that I and, we're I, and just I personally, I'm gonna I'm be I'm gonna be honest though. I'm not really a type. Like I ain't really staying with no nigga if we ain't fucking. Like mm. I'm gonna be honest. Like that's not. But not just fucking though. I think not, but even like, like intimacy, the intimacy, like, like he, intimacy. Yeah, but here's the thing: why I say fucking because for me to even fuck, I have to be mentally stimulated in some way. Mm. So. It has to be some intimacy. It has to be some flirting. It has to be something. Like, I cannot have sex and it's just blank. Like, that's just not who I am. So it's like, I probably, like, once I get there, I'm gone. I'm going to be honest to you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I can't even fathom the thought of intimacy being completely dead, like, Mm. at all. Like, I'm gone. Like, Mm. you know what I'm saying? That's something that is a huge love language of mine. I'm not intimacy. It doesn't say directly intimacy, but it's physical touch Mm. and, you know, stuff like that and words of affirmation. So I put that into physical touching and flirting and making each other feel good. Like once that's gone, I know I am physically checked out of the relationship. I was, I had this interview and we was talking about, um, shout out my guy Vito. We was talking about like love language Mm. and he was saying like, teach me how to love you in that season. Do you think your love language changed? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not even that it changes per season. I think that just, you know, we've been together going on five years. I feel like I've been many different women through Mm -hmm. these years. Like, you know what I mean? And I think that just learning who your partner is in every season is we're never going to be the same. I'm not the same girl you met me. And we've talked about that. Mm -hmm. I'm not the same girl you met. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just going to change in general. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and it's not even that it changes. Like, it's either I might want all of them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It might not even be a one or or thing. Like, my, you know, your needs change, my needs change. And, I like, at my big age I am now, I don't understand. Not under, not saying I don't understand. I don't understand why any couple can't have all of them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If you guys are actively looking to give each other what we need or actively looking to please each other, all of them actually stand, mm. like, to be honest. Like, no, I get it. I, um, <clears throat> so we, what you keep asking all the questions, and I would love to hear vice versa. How do you feel about that clip that you heard? <laughs> <laughs> no, Baby. I think, um, no, I think it can definitely uh turn into like uh, a friendship if you let it. Mm. Um, <laughs> like we roommates, we boys, yeah. No, I think I, don't I think you watch football, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, how we boys. I be trying to um, be in inter- So it's funny because it's funny as you say that because when I hear things like that, I'm automatically just thinking about myself or like the man. What like you I'm, mean? I'm automatically thinking about the man. Like, am I doing if Am I not doing something to be more intimate? Am I not doing things to show my affection? If am I not interesting? So like that's why I say like I didn't even think about you watching football or nothing like that. My first thing is like, damn, like, am I showing her love enough? Am I saying she's pretty enough? Am I getting her roses enough? Am I think- being spontaneous enough? No, like I feel like. Do you feel like is that something men do by default? You guys just like automatically feel like y'all in the wrong. Not maybe it's just because we're problem solvers, right? So like my first, my initial thought is like, damn, is this me? Because if some of y'all, some of y'all, not all of y'all. Yeah, but I just feel like is this me? You're a problem solver. You can say that. I'll let you say that. Yeah, like it's like for me, I'm like, is this me? Because I want to solve that problem. Okay, cool. Don't don't become but. So here's my problem with what you're saying. Like, is it me? So I feel like there's a balance of thinking, like, is it me or is it really me? Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like sometimes, like, y'all jump the what gun. What you mean, is it me? Or okay. It? 
so yeah, I jumped the gun to be problem solvers really fast, right? So, um, and it's so crazy. Shout out to uh, Pastor Larry Page of Zion Church because between him and Ke- Keith Battle, like I just love them. You've been doing, you've been watching your church like every yeah, day. Yeah, I don't play no, I don't play. I get my word in. So, Larry Page said something to me today that was like that really stood out, and um, maybe because I'm in a relationship, so I resonated with it. He said, "Women listen from their gut." So because women listen from their gut, they're always like thinking like underneath the actual issue. Like, where is it really stemming from? He was like, with men, you have to give men the exact problem because men are automatically, okay, that's what you want me to fix? That's what I'm going to do, <laughs> no, right? right, right like, is right. that what you want me to do? Because that's what I'm going to fix. So if you give them too many things at a time, they kind of get lost in translation. translation it's like- all right, well, I'm only going to fix this because that's what stood out to me the most. Mm -hmm. The reason why I say that, like, right, boom. So if everything I say that you're trying to problem solve, what do men really think that they should, like, What? how do you hear what you really should be fixing versus what you think you should be fixing? Mm. You get what I'm saying? Because sometimes I feel like y'all just like, okay, we're just going to problem solve everything. But then how do you really reflect on, damn, what if I'm really just like, but what if I like you know what I'm saying like y'all just so quick to fix but it's deeper than just the fixing because mm-hmm. the reason why he said women so what happens is Larry Page said and I actually wanted to I actually meant to bring up the clip how you bring up that I um, totally didn't get around to it but he said the Send reason he said um women feel from their gut so what happens is when they bring you a problem it's not that they want you to solve it they want you to feel it mm-hmm. like they want you to like feel what they're saying because they and feel in their and yeah like because like, yeah. they feel it in their gut y'all are so quick the problem solve you don't really feel what we're saying mm. so y'all just think we're gonna fix what we think we say we, what we think she want fixed versus fixing what or feeling what she wants you to feel mm. you get what i'm saying so when you like I don't know. By default, when you said that, I just felt like, yeah, what am I doing for intimacy or that lacks the intimacy? But sometimes it's not just about fixing you, or feeling what you should have did or not did. Sometimes it's really just like, damn, I wonder what makes her feel that way. Not, so it's damn. Not, it's crazy because I had to listen to you to understand. And you're right, because, yeah, when I hear it, right, the first thing I'm thinking about is. How do I be intimate to make her feel good? Mm. Not why, not why me not being intimate doesn't make her feel How good. How does it? Oh, you get what I'm saying? The, the, exactly. the difference is okay. Me, I'm like, I gotta do what I gotta do mm-hmm. so my life can be easier. Mm-hmm. Honestly, right? So it's like she's gonna complain. But you, but she's gonna get on my nerves. Wait, that's crazy as fuck. You said I gotta do what I gotta do to make her feel good to make my life easier. I'm just being that real. I'm being very honest. Self oriented, though. It, it, and I'm being honest. I'm trying to be because transparent it makes, in it. No, and I get that. I get that. But it's just, do you hear how that. <laughs> no, like, no, I do. But that's I what I, out, like, it's just, that sounds like I got to do whatever I got to do to make to make my life as easy as possible. So if that's what she want, I'm going to do it. But do you feel her though? Right. And that's why I say- you understand the place it's coming from? Do you understand the place she feels it from? Like, you know what I'm saying? But that's why I say in this conversation, this understanding, like what the first thing I hear is like, okay, I want my girl to feel good because I know if she feel good, she's going to treat me in X, Y, Z. She's going to treat me like this, right? I'm sorry. No. I'm about to tap into the girls bashing men. Not that I'm fucking with you, but you even you double down on it. No, I'm 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 just being and I'm not, honest. And I'm, not, I, and I'm not and I'm not judging you. But it, you're let definitely me be clear. Judging, but it's okay. I, a little bit, but not really, right? Because I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. You double down on okay. I'm trying to do what I need to do for her to make her feel good. No, I didn't double only, down. I'm just trying then to finish you came my point. Back I didn't double with, down. I'm just trying to finish that's what the, I was saying. All right, cool. so I didn't that's double that's down. I'm just trying it. to finish. Right. So what I'm saying is like for me is like yo, if my girl, I want to make my girl feel good because it just makes life easier. Just being honest, right? Like so, I feel like. But what about making a girl feel good just so she could feel? Good? No, I get, I get it. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying maybe I'm not there yet. I'm still young. You know what I'm saying so. That's, so for me, I'm just saying. I want my girl to be happy because it makes you life, happy. <laughs> life is just better you when your woman is happy. You feel because me? Because so, it makes you happy because you don't got to with no mouth, no lip, no attitude, no, you know, dis- 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 
Ness, and, and, like and I'm just, just trying to be honest. So what that, I'm saying is, I I'm feel sorry, like I'm drinking that word probably wasn't the best word to choose. I wouldn't do that. But all I'm saying is, I just feel like, yeah, mm -hmm. if you're happy, shit, mm -hmm. happy wife, happy life no, for real, happy spouse, spouse happy, happy house. house, right? But still, you're my spouse. So either way, for me, okay, for me, enough. it's like okay, if I if if you're happy, we're happy. That's okay. how I'm looking at it. So I'm like, you know what? If I have to do X, Y, and Z to get one, two, three, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. To get but, that one, two, three. But like you're saying, as a woman, it's not just math equations for you. Yes. For you, it's, it's deeper than that. It's, it's why. And gut. I think that's why that's the disconnect in relationships mm -hmm. a lot of time because men, we're trying to solve this problem. Women don't want to solve. Boom, say less. I'm going to fix this. It's right. like, bro. Women don't want a problem to be solved. They, want to they be, kind of want want to be felt right they exactly right so and i think that's what it is so sometimes men we have to slow down yeah and not just like you said back to your analogy let me go fix let me go fix your, your tire granted in reality let's for people that's, yeah. that might not catch this for in reality for people that might not catch this if your woman's tire is flat, go fix that tire. Yeah, for sure, for but, sure, for sure. And um, what they say, like... But um, behind the scenes, baby, why you didn't look at your... Uh, what's the name? You seen this high picture? Whenever but, you see but, the but, 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 no, no, no. We can never say no, that. Okay, all right. Not, not why. Okay, okay, I'm just being real. Why. Being real. <laughs> but listen, or, or it could be, whenever you see this get like this, make sure you do this and just let me know and I can help you. It's, you, know, you, you know how men can understand it? But I'm not a man, so you got to tell I'm going to tell you how men can understand it. <laughs> it's going to be very simple. You feed a man, he'll eat for a day. Okay. You teach a man how to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. Okay. So I think with women, even in that analogy, right? If a woman's tire is flat, again, men, for the men that don't understand, go change the tire. Go <laughs> fix the tire for the man that don't understand. But for he the said, sake- only that baby's tire <laughs> flat, please. But, but for the sake you'll of- never hear the end of it. For the, for, for, <laughs> for the sake of an analogy- Figuratively, that's the word I was looking for. Okay. Like, like in real life, real, realistically, go fix the tire. But mm -hmm. figuratively, what women want is for you to understand that her tire is flat, that hurt her feelings, and she might be hurt because of whatever she has going on, right? She might be hurt because she never got taught to actually monitor her car. Right. And as so a man, so now she's irritated because it's like, what the fuck? If I knew how to do this, I'd be paying attention. Yo, a lot of women really don't know. Shout out to the women who do, because it's not, I know a, lot, a couple ladies who know how to change their tire and all that. I'm gonna be honest with you. I taught myself how to drive, but that's that. Let me finish. I ain't let me finish. My, no, for go ahead, go so, ahead. So, so right, so as a man, she want to be felt. I mean, as a man, feel her, understand she's hurt, right? But also. Teach her to do better, but you gotta teach, you gotta help me with this because I feel like women are very complicated. Not in that like moment, this, though. I, I know the analogy of the tire worked for momentarily, but I don't like it for things that have deeper rooted issues. Like what? Like, like what? for example, um, let me see if I can think of one. For example, um, I don't know, rough day at work. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I have no way to fix that, though. No, right? you don't. Exactly. But these mm -hmm. are the perfect ways to deal with how a woman's feeling versus what you can fix. Because okay. that's something you so can't fix. That's role, right? not, not even role play. Right. You had a rough day at okay. work. Go. Boom. Oh, my God. And this is actually a real life scenario. I just got written up at work. I'm falling short. I'm, you haven't been, a, I haven't been excelling performance wise this month. Mm -hmm. My boss coming down on me. I am distraught. Go. Me? <laughs> <laughs> me? Yeah. I feel like me. What's the What's the thing you're gonna say? Just Just in you. Before we even role play, what in you? Say what you would say, normal wise. All right, bae. Honestly, <clears throat> fuck them niggas. <laughs> like, fuck my job. Nah, like I'm my like, bread and butter. Like. Honestly, fuck them niggas. Like, you feel me? Like, they get like that sometimes. Sometimes they get, like, sometimes, like, just being honest, understanding corporate now, because at first I didn't understand it. Yo, you understand now. Understanding corporate now. 
Just letting you know, bae. Just being real with you. This job is some people's entire life, right? So they might take it more serious than you do. And that's okay. But sometimes in those moments when you aren't taking it as serious as they are, they can see that and they want to catch it and they might say something to you. Mm -hmm. It ain't the end of the world. It don't mean that they don't like you, bae. Just take it with a grain of salt. Let it go in one ear or out of them. You feel me? Like, just, yeah, I understand yeah. you're upset. Fuck them niggas, babe. It's going to be good. You still got your job. Mm -hmm. Let's just make the, the best of it. Okay. That wasn't terrible. That wasn't terrible? That wasn't terrible. I feel like I, before I got a corporate job, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'd be yeah. like, man, babe, fuck them niggas. Like, yeah, babe, that yeah, shit yeah. ain't. Fuck it. Go chase your dreams, bro. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck your bill money. <laughs> fuck your bill money what it pays. Go chase your, go chase your dreams. Man, fuck them niggas. You did a good job. For real, I did? Yeah, you did a good oh, job. Thank you, All I'm going to say is. I can't speak for every woman. I'm just my own woman. So you'd be surprised how yeah. much of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And women. I understand that. And I think you still did a great job, nonetheless. But something is just like, yeah, come give me a hug. I know yeah. it was a rough day for you. I, I see you. That's and I see, hard for on. me to do. And, and I see how hard you work. And I know that shit just probably really Man. fucked you up because I, I've seen how hard you work. So it might have been a bad month, but I seen overall how hard you work. That's it. That's hard because. That's it. I want to be your because sometimes people just want to be seen. No, but that's a fact, and I say that it's, it. I say it's hard because, like, for me, I want to be like your knight in, in shining armor. It's like I want to go to the job and beat these niggas up, like <laughs> fuck these niggas. I want to be like, man, <laughs> fuck these niggas. But like you said, sometimes. But you like even in your response, I just also feel like it was just like you know, fuck them. Sometimes it, look, it was a teachable moment, but sometimes it's not about a teachable moment. Sometimes it's a felt moment. Like you know what? I I just want to let you know I see you, and I've seen how hard you worked. You've been there for a long time. Matter of fact, do you know how long your girl been there? Not you, but anybody. Like, I seen you put in work for five years. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to get real, I seen you put in work for five years. So I know this just a, a month and you may have not performed your best, but I seen you put in work for five years. Mm -hmm. Don't let this time be that time. I see you. Give me a hug. I see you. It's the I see you for me. It's the I see you. <laughs> I okay. see you. Babe, we got this, we got this game. All um, right, let's do it. It's called the blank and is the healing edition. Mm -hmm. Um, we said we were gonna do what two, three, what? Which one? Let's do two. Two. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we we got this game. It's called the blank and healing edition. Uh, yo, if you got games, send it to us. If you got uh like merch and stuff, to, uh, we could use that. Send it to us as well. Hit us up at uh. Yeah, cause this hoodie busting. I'm not gonna lie, I got still it. Yeah, it's called the only brand. The 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 own. Lee brand yeah it's funny because i don't even i don't even give like clothing line shout out they send me stuff i don't really give them shout outs That's i wear it, but whatever this shit is fire the quality Definitely is fire father. but um if you got like card games or if you got suggestions even if you got like questions you want to ask to send it to us uh send it to mr underscore shot it what <laughs> miss under girl <laughs> whoa <laughs> We lit, we lit. We <laughs> Not me trying to correct you and come back the wrong way. Mr. Mr. Underscore J Hill. J Hill. There we go. Uh, she, she dot, dot Shade. Let's yeah. do it. If you got anything for us, you um you want us to rock, you want us to support um some questions. Uh she dot Shade, <laughs> Mr. Underscore J Hill. All right. Yes, sir. I'm a um we're going to choose two. All right, let's do two. Are we choosing from anywhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, boom. Let me just come so let me. I hope they don't give me nothing too crazy because you got two. Oh, hold up. Get <laughs> two out of here. Boom. One. Cards stuck together. Two. All right. Boom. My time. I just pick. Let <clears throat> me pick two. Let's see what I got. Oh, these are cute. Two. All right. I got my two. Why don't you have some OZ <clears throat> deep ones? All right. Let's. All right. You going first? I'll go first. You go first. All right. <clears throat> no, I'll go first because I yeah. Go Let me go first. Ladies first. What do you think surprises me most about our connection? Babe, I have no idea, but I'm gonna try. Please try. All right. What surprises you the most about our connection? Damn, this is a harder game than I thought. <clears throat> What do you think surprises me most about our connection? It's 
I think um Jeez, babe, I don't know. I think um I'm gonna just throw some things out there. I okay. Think, geez, I really don't know. I think uh our connection, that's a good one. Mm hmm I just one thing you think that you know that I may like about our connection. We'll simplify it a little bit. Mm. I don't know, babe. I, I honestly, um, <clears throat> I think, um, if I had to be honest, I'd be searching for that honesty because, like, I don't know. I um. You trying to figure out what I like about our connection? Mm -hmm. So you don't know nothing. You don't think I like anything about our connection? I think you like something. It's just you just don't know what it is separately. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll tell you after. I'll put it to the side and I'll tell you one thing. You want to say? Okay. You want me to say no? Yeah. So one thing I like about our connection is like I've told you this before. Like sometimes, like especially like in moments of like celebratory moments we have real moments like we mm. have like you know we either dance together <laughs> you know i love that but like it really just feels like nobody's there just me and you or we'll, like sing to each other or stuff like that like that's like something i really enjoy about our connection like sometimes we have the ability to like block out everybody and it just like be you and i even if the room is like super filled mm. and i really think that's really one of my favorite moments that we have is just that ability to block out everybody and whether we dance or sing to each other and just really make the moment special. I feel like we have a really good, just we we've had really good moments of making moments very special amongst us both. Boom. That means a lot for me, babe. I ain't gonna lie to you. Oh, I'm so happy. I was able to let you know since you didn't know. No, I now, think, if you don't know, now, you know, no, I mean, it meant a lot for me. All right. Um, but even like I think that's dope because it's just what you say like you like uh, words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I do be searching for like things. Like, like even, it, be, it get hard. Even sometimes. on like when you threw the surprise party for my birthday and you did your speeches, they were just so nice and it was just so heartfelt. And then it was it just was so felt like. But I felt like it just we've we've had several moments over through our relationship that we've had like that. Just some surreal real moments that were genuine that you could feel them and people who were there could feel them and i think that's important all right thank you for I sure you. i love you love you too all right so my question is <laughs> oh god i'm scared <laughs> what, what how is... do you think i find peace <laughs> <laughs> how do i feel like you find peace um <sighs> hmm how do I feel like you find peace? Mm -hmm. I will have to say, like, maybe in the times you're alone and you talk to God by yourself, because mm -hmm. I don't think that, like, I know that a lot of times you don't really like to talk to God with out in public. But mm -hmm. I think in your times, Dolo, mm -hmm. where you can talk to God by yourself, I think you're able to find peace. Um, just because you kind of have your own time, like you know what I mean. Like I probably would have to say those moments. That's surprisingly. That's surprise. I'm surprised because I, that there's because honestly, outside of that, you work, 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 and there's only but so much time that you spend to yourself. And I think those times, like, it's probably when you talk to God by yourself. Mm. For sure. That's crazy. It's um, it's crazy that you said that because like. I wouldn't expect you to say that. Like, well, no, I definitely, I find peace through speaking to God for sure. And it's, it's weird because, like, I don't talk about it a lot. But yeah. Because you do it by yourself. Yeah. No, nah, yeah. that's a fact. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, you do it by I, yourself. And yeah. it's, it's when nobody's around, like, we know. And I only know that because, like, even when, like, in prayer, like, I know that sometimes you don't like to, it's not that you don't like to pray with me. It's just, like, you really want your one-on-one -on -one time. And there's nothing wrong with that because you that's just your peace that show where you can probably be the most vulnerable dolo. So Damn, I, I would have never thought you even paid attention. 
Yeah. I feel like you find peace with your friends. Like, I feel like your peace is definitely like when you could just be around your girls and just just be like, I feel like you're like, what's the word? Like flowy. Mm -hmm. And like, sometimes you can't be flowy with me because like I'm super critic, critic, critical, critical. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I know it can be annoying as fuck sometimes. Annoying as fuck, <laughs> like, honestly. But I feel like when you with your friends, you could be the most flowy and just like be yourself and just, you don't got to worry about what somebody said, your attitude or whatever. <laughs> like, I feel like it's that's crazy because you, you think it's with my friends, but it's really when you are a Meyer or not here. Mm, by yourself. Oh my God. That's probably why you said by myself. When I'm by myself, I be in the house like, what was it this weekend? You weren't here. Amaya wasn't here. I was in the house vibing mm. like but, that's so, why, but i get it though why you would say my friends because i definitely have a piece of just completely able just i just be myself like mm. not that i'm not myself any other places but like what like i'm very selective on my friends and i feel like me and my friends all have like a special bond and when i'm with my friends i'm just really just super free so i can see why you would say that mm. definitely i think okay. you next what do you love to do with me that i may not be aware of What do you love to do with me? That you might not be aware of? That I might not know, yeah. I don't think you know that. <laughs> Why did you just look at me like that? What's up with you? <laughs> Is it a time to be honest? Yeah. Babe, I'm clingy as fuck. You definitely are clingy. I, I like to do everything. <laughs> like every single thing. I want you to be there. In my pocket, hand. In my pocket. Not in my fucking pocket. No, I'm dead ass. Like for yeah. real, I don't think you know that though. Like you be acting like yeah, I don't know. Like you don't be getting it. Like sometimes everything. you may have a different way of showing it. Sometimes. Hey, I tell you, like <laughs> at my, I want you at my interviews. I want you everywhere. I don't no, know, but like you want me to sit there. It's the one thing. Like you just be like, yeah, All right, but, sit right here, right next. Yeah, to me. I'm gonna do this, but don't move. Yeah, that's my wow, like God, everything. I think yeah, I feel like that's that's the mindset of the question. Let me What's make the question sure I, again? Hold on, let me make sure. What, to, what do you love to do with me that I may not be aware of? And your answer is everything. Everything. Oh, that's so cute. That is so fucking cute. Everything. Whatever. All right, bro. Cheers All right. to everything. I don't. What's your last? You don't got no more in your cup. Come no, on. we we still going. We still All right, drinking. one more. Come on, give me give me a card. I'm gonna pour a a little, over. a little bit, bro. A little bit. Yeah, we're gonna. This is good it. liquor, bro. This shit costs a couple dollars. It did. You did that. That's that YouTube check. Bro, chill. <laughs> Yo. All right, so my last question is. This is a really good. Wait, 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 wait. No, no. I gotta ask you a question. Um, yeah, is that supposed to be a shot? Oh. But no, um, I can't drink that what do you, what what do you like to do with me that I might not know of? Okay, ask it back, basically. Um, honestly, I would say like it's like everything too, though. Like no, but like so cap, I'm like, cap. what you mean, cap? Like I do, like I really do. Like it's like it's I be wanting to just vibe out. Like I'm like vague. I. Boom. I love when we vacay. Like, not even, it's not of even vacay. Of course you oh love when we vacay because like, you love to spend money. Out, it's, <laughs> out. it's not about that. Come on. You gonna act like vibes not undeniable without the money? That's for next episode. Right? <laughs> <laughs> write that down. Write that down. Maybe not. <laughs> I like wait, that. That's wait, for wait, next wait, episode wait. because that's, a, time whole, time that's time a whole segment. So what I'm saying, though, even on the trip, though. If we just vibing. Babe, that's for next episode. No, Let's I'm write that saying, down. But there's still a part of my question. What I'm saying is, I just feel like I you, love when we are you in our down element. You this money thing. So no, it's not. You love no, spending no, money, look, but okay. You, hear, you see where you're going. Listen, I love when we're in our element the most. And I feel like when we're in our element is when we're most carefree. And we're just really enjoying the moment. AKA, we and, got enough money <laughs> to not worry and about. And it so happens to be when we're on vacation. <laughs> And we just be vibing and just whatever. And if it's not on vacation. The world is my witness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love you, baby. You see how you do me? No, I'm just saying. I mean, I don't mean it like that, but I mean it like that at the same time. We be having some vibes. Tell the people. 
We've oh had God. some vibes. All right, so <laughs> her favorite thing. Not to the do Lord is, is my money. witness. I'm screaming. <laughs> All right, so it's not my fucking favorite. Thing I said the world. The the world what the the, the world, world is my witness about what I didn't say. I said the vibes that we have when we're carefree. It so happened to be, you know, and when we spend their money. But we're already there. The money's already gone. All right, bet. So, um, what do you think is unique about our relationship? Go. What I think is unique about our relationship is our ability to grow and be resilient in mm. our relationship. Definitely unique. Definitely unique. I think what's unique about our relationship is, you know how I always say, like, like this old saying, "What makes you laugh, make you cry." Mm-hmm. That <laughs> the, the thing that we enjoy, right? Like, it's like makes us cry too. Yeah, I feel like our specialty is being us. Yeah, to the T. But our fault is being us <laughs> to the T. Again, so like, okay, like, <laughs> like just like you said, we could vibe, we could dance, we could yeah. you man, we could be together and just just chilling. I feel like the same things we're super passionate about in a good way. We're super passionate about on all realms mm -hmm. so even when it's bad or even when it's like moments where it's probably not as pleasant it's the same type of passion so what makes you laugh what makes you cry no nah, facts <laughs> what you think because you make me laugh and you've made me cry don't do that I i'm try, just saying i try to make you laugh more than i make you cry you do but you've made me cry yeah, for sure did, would you would you say the same thing? Um, what's the most unique about our relationship? What would you say? No, I answered. You asked me first. So oh, what would you say? Okay, I think I, I said this. I, I answered. The same. Yeah. Okay. Um. <clears throat> shit. Last time was a bonus episode. For sure. Uh, this would be what seventy five. I don't even know. Do you know? It might be seventy six. It know. might be seventy six. Yeah, I I don't know. I um, think it's seventy six. But we'll put it on. We'll have the correct answer by the time it's I think to. it might be 75, though, because we never did 75. I don't think we did 75. I think it might be 76. All right, we won't. We won't see. You want to bet? Ooh, you know I'm a betting type of guy, but you want to bet? Never mind. I don't want to bet. I, I like the $100. bet. $100. Uh, $100? Ooh. Episode 76. 75? 76. I'm going to say 75. You say 76? $100. 76. Gang. I'm... 76. 75. And we and we pinky sweared on it. All right. Better, I, I like the gamble. So $75. Um, All right. So episode, you said, said episode $100. 75. $100. You said episode 75. I said episode 76. All right, bet. You want to handle this now or no? You want to wait? So we we won't wait. All we'll right. do on the next episode. All right. <clears throat> Gemini Scorpio podcast. Ooh, um, I haven't heard that in so long. Not Gemini Scorpio podcast came through. We said this in a bonus episode. How are we carrying this? Um, we still doing it how we said last time or? See y'all next week, nigga. Gemini Scorpio podcast. See y'all next week. We'll be uploading a lot of clips. Um, Jay Hill, Sade. You already know the fucking vibes. She Sade in the building, formerly known as Taylor Bay. Had to do a little rebrand. We'll explain that another time. But here we are, period. Gemini Scorpio podcast is wrapped. We out. Gang, gang. Mm -hmm. That was great, baby. Mm -hmm.